Today we're going to look at a really nice problem that is really a tweak on the idea of finding primitive Pythagorean triples. So let's recall that a primitive Pythagorean triple is a triple of natural numbers a, b, and c, so that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In other words, they form the sides and hypotenuse of a right triangle. So what we want to do is look for solutions to a squared plus n times b squared equals c squared, where n is a natural number. So let's put that in there so that we know. So n has got to be a natural number here. And well, what we'd really like is not just to find a couple of solutions, but maybe a way to generate infinitely many solutions. Now, will we get all of the solutions? Well, actually, I think in some ways, or maybe at some stopping point of our formula, we're able to generate all of our solutions. Although maybe if we push towards the classic stopping point for Pythagorean triples, we actually end up losing some, and we'll discuss that once we get to the, that point. Okay, so anyway, what I'd like to notice at first is if we have a squared plus n times b squared equals c squared, then that implies that a over c squared plus n times b over c squared equals 1. But observe, that means that we have a point, a rational point, I'll maybe call that rational point x equals a over c and y equals b over c, on the curve x squared plus n times y squared equals 1. So in other words, on that ellipse. So it looks like we've translated this idea of solving this nice Pythagorean theorem looking inspired problem to finding rational points on our ellipse. So let's see if we can reevaluate this problem in that setting. Okay, there we've got something suitably elliptical shaped on the board. And I'll just put here that this is the curve x squared plus n times y squared equals 1. Let's observe, that means it goes through this point 1, 0. It also goes through this point over here, minus 1, 0. Up here it goes through this point, let's see, that's going to be 0, and then the square root of n in the denominator, so 1 over the square root of n, and then a similar point down here. Okay, nice. So now I'd like to suppose that I've got a rational point on this curve. Let's say that rational point is right here and it has coordinates rs. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw a line through this point right here, 1, 0, and then this point rs. Okay, so let's see, that is our point right there. And let's observe that since the coordinates of the two points that we know on this line are rational, that means that the slope here is also rational. So I'm going to say that the slope is equal to m, and like I said, it's going to be a rational number. And then, well, let's say that we know the equation of this line as well. Well, we do. It's going to be y equals m times x minus 1. Good. And now what we can do is use this setup to solve for r and s in terms of m. So how might we do that? Well, let's notice that we know that r squared plus n times s squared is equal to 1. And then we also know that s is equal to m times r minus 1. That's because this point right here that I have in pink, this rs point, is on both the line and the ellipse. But now what we'll do is we'll take these two equations and like fuse them together, if you will. So we'll substitute that expression for s into the first equation. That's going to give us, let's see, we'll have r squared um, plus n times m squared times r minus 1 quantity squared, but that's going to give us r squared minus 2r plus 1. And then this is all going to be equal to 1. But now I can just expand out and then maybe move everything to one side of the equation, and we're going to have something like this. 
1 plus m squared times n times r squared. So that's grouping the r squared parts. And then it'll be minus 2 times m squared times n times r. So that's grouping the r parts. And then finally, we'll have plus m squared times n minus 1. So we have this is equal to 0. And now we'd like to factor this to solve for r. Notice that seems like it could be pretty difficult, but in fact, it isn't. And that's because notice that we know that r equals 1 has to be a solution here because this point 1, 0 is, well, that's on our ellipse and on our line. So we're just solving for the other point, which is going to be the other factor of this factorization. So let's see, if we do this factorization, we can kind of guess it just by these things right here. So we'll have 1 plus m squared n times r, and then it'll be minus m squared n plus 1. Now you can check that if you multiply that out, you'll get exactly what we need. Okay, so now let's go over here and do what I just mentioned, and that is solve this equation or this expression equals zero for r given that that's going to give us our other coordinate on our ellipse. So let's see, what will we have? We'll have r equals, so it'll be 1 minus m squared times n over 1 plus m squared times n. And now since we have just some sort of arbitrary number m. It's not totally arbitrary. It represents our slope, which is rational. I'm going to exchange that for another rational number just to make it look a little nicer. Let's replace m with minus 1 over t. So that's going to turn this into the following. So we'll have t squared minus n over t squared plus n. And that requires just a tiny bit of simplification, but it's not that bad. So that gives us an expression for r in terms of this new uh, parameter t, if you will. And then I'll let you check this, but you can plug in this equation for r into our set up right there our solution for s in terms of r and you'll see that s has to be equal to 2 times t over t squared plus n. Okay, nice. And this represents all of the solutions for r and s where t ranges through all of the rational numbers. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is take the solution for r and s and then maybe bootstrap that back to a solution to our original equation, which is uh, over just the integers. So, so far we found that if we've got rational numbers x and y satisfying this equation x squared plus n times y squared equals 1, then in fact we have x equals t squared minus n over t squared plus n, and y is 2t over t squared plus n, where t is a rational number. And now we'd like to push this back to find an infinite solution set to this equation right here, which is over the integers. All right, so how might we do that? Well, let's set t equal to p over q with the GCD of p and q equal 1. So in other words, it's going to be a fraction in lowest terms. But let's see what that leaves us for x. So that means we have x equals p squared over q squared minus n over, let's see, that's going to be p squared over q squared plus n. And then we'll have y equal to 2 times p over q all over p squared over q squared plus n. But now we'd like to maybe clear denominators a little bit, and that's going to give us the following expression, which is a little bit nicer. And that is we'll have x is equal to p squared minus n times q squared over p squared plus n times q squared. And then we'll have y is equal to, let's see, that's going to be 2pq all over p squared plus nq squared. Okay, nice. 
But now what we'll do is we'll set that expression for x and y equal to a over c and b over c. So we'll have a over c equal to this p squared minus n times q squared over p squared plus n times q squared. And then we'll have b over c equal to 2pq over, well, that kind of common denominator here, p squared plus n times q squared. And now I'd like to observe the following, and I'll just put here a star, and I'll say we're good if these are in lowest terms. And what I mean by we're good if they're in lowest terms, that means that we have this nice parameterization of a, b, and c. So we'll have a is p squared minus n times q squared. We'll have b is 2pq. And we'll have c is p squared plus n times q squared. And that will parameterize all of the solutions that we get as long as these fractions right here are in lowest terms as is. That means that the numerator and the denominator do not share common factors. But that means that there's a problem if these do share common factors. But I'd like to observe that the numerator and the denominator in both of these cases will share common factors exactly when the GCD of P and N is not equal to one. So let's just put that here, GCD of P and N not equal to one. And so in that case, we're actually gonna miss some of these solutions. Now that might seem a little bit tricky, so let's look at an example where this kind of thing occurs. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing, it really helps. Okay, so, so far we've shown that if we've got integers a, b, and c, so that a squared plus n times b squared equals c squared, then we know that a over c is equal to t squared minus n over t squared plus n. b over c is equal to 2t over t squared plus n, where t is a rational number. And now in a special case where a certain fraction would reduce, and I believe, although I didn't carefully check this, but I believe this is the case, that occurs exactly when the GCD of P and N is equal to one. We know that A, A can be written as P squared minus N times Q squared, and B can be written as two PQ, and C can be written as P squared plus NQ squared. And now here's a cautionary example to just assume that these are all of the solutions because in fact, these are not all of the solutions. They only account for the solutions when those rational expressions we saw before did not simplify. Let's consider this equation a squared plus five b squared equals c squared. So in other words, it's the equation where n is equal to five. Now this has an obvious solution of a equals two, b equals one, and c equals three. Well, that's obvious because four plus five is equal to nine. In other words, two squared plus five times one squared is equal to three squared. But that would mean that our b has to be equal to one, but this parameterization up here says that b has to be equal to two times p times q. But look, one cannot be equal to two times p times q, regardless of what integers you try. So that means we must have our a over c and b over c being parameterized in this rational form. And yes, this is the way to write it, but I think it's slightly more natural to write it as a solution to our rational equation that we had before. So in other words, if we turn this back into x squared plus five times y squared equals one, our solution up here would correspond to the solution, let's see, x equals two thirds, and then y equals, let's see, that's gonna be one third. And you can check this as well if you want. Notice that two thirds squared plus five times one third squared is definitely equal to one. That's four ninths plus five ninths. Okay, so now what value of t's will build this? 
Well, notice what do we need? Well, we're going to need x equal to, well, we're going to need 2 thirds equal to what? Well, that's got to be equal to this t squared minus 5 over t squared plus 5. So that's going to get the job done here. But observe that means that 2 t squared plus 10 has to be equal to 3 t squared minus 15. But that means that t squared has to be equal to 25, which tells us that t is equal to 5. But notice that corresponds to our p over q being equal to 5 over 1, which would be p equal to 5 and q equal to 1. But then remember our n here is 5, and so that breaks this rule here of the GCD of p and n being 1, because the GCD of 5 and 5 is, well, 5. It is not 1. And you can, in fact, check that this these values of p and q plugged into our equation up here most definitely does not give us the solution 2, 1, 3, because that solution is gained after simplifying those fractions that we had before. The real parameterization of these missing solutions should be thought of as the parameterization gained by this rational number equation, and then maybe pushing that into an integer equation. And that's a good place to stop.